everyone, my name is Sundar. At Cisco, I lead product for our full stack observability platform and our cloud native observability solutions. And with me today is Laura from Evolution. Laura, welcome aboard. Thank you for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me today. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what you guys do and what you do? So my company focuses on observability, and so we use the Cisco platforms to get observability for our clients. So we really focus on the business observability, so think about an entire checkout process, mm -hmm. or maybe a process, even a, a very long login process mm -hmm. at times, it if it has facial recognition. We really help clients understand where should they place the monitors, mm -hmm. where should we place their alerts, how do they keep the noise down, how do they have really effective, proactive observability. Yeah, so basically observe what matters to their business. Yes, Which makes exactly. perfect sense, which yep. is exactly aligned with the way we think about it, which is great, which is why we are working together. Um, so you're one of the first people in the world who have developed and who have seen this FSO platform, right? And who have developed a module on it. Uh, tell me a little bit about the module that you all have developed. What does it do? So we developed a FinTech solution that really is for the banking sector, mm -hmm. and it's around credit card processing. Very cool. So it looks at credit card processing, so how much money is running through, how mm -hmm. many transactions have, are running through, and we split it by customer, region, data center. And the reason that we picked those splits is because it's really relevant to the business. So mm -hmm. when somebody calls in and says, I'm having an issue processing, they say, I work for this company. Uh -huh. And then it's really easy to then look at that specific company's data and say, oh, it's the whole company, or it's just this region of the country for mm -hmm. that company. And then we also focused on things that you can change. Like you can change which data center you're processing things through. So you can flip it. And we also mm -hmm. did things around how the card transactions are routed, like the different schemes that are used. Mm -hmm. And so you could flip those. So things that you could immediately impact that would change so that you no longer are impacting your customers negatively and your business is running fine and then you can go solve the problem. That's awesome. So it sounds like it can model the entire business journey of a credit card transaction. Yes. Now, that makes me think, could you do other business journeys too? Sounds like that is an interesting problem yes. that you can apply to other places. Yeah, so um, for other credit card and those type of companies, we've done a lot of things around their branches. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking that for banking, it could be something around branches. We also, are a lot of our customers are insurance companies, and we can do a lot around claims processing. And let me give you a for instance. Mm -hmm. For instance, all of these companies have a concept of a customer. You data model a customer one time. Yep. And then you have it for the insurance company, you have it for the bank. Maybe they have a couple different attributes depending on what type of business they are. Yep. But you really build it once and use it many times and that is the beauty of this. And yep. it's a set data model, so a big problem in the observability space is junk data. Yep. People sending in data that is not useful, it's not in the right format, and it really eliminates that problem and gives you usable data. And, the, and they pay for a lot of the junk data. Yeah, and they don't right. have to pay for the junk data here because really it's not going to come in if it's junk. You need yep. a data model to match it because in the Cisco FSO platform, it has to match a data model to come in. Yep, yep. Um, so, since you mentioned this, this is actually a very interesting application that you all have built, right? It's really beautiful. We think about observability very much about as infrastructure or applications of speeds and feeds. But you've really, really, really made it relevant to the business. That's a beautiful example, I love it. What's your experience been working on the Cisco FSO platform? What do you love? What do you think we could do better? Or what do you hate? So the experience has been really awesome. Um, you guys have a very easy way to interact with the platform. It's basically just a schema that you interact with and extend mm -hmm. to make it happen. Um, I think some of the dashboarding stuff that we've done, you guys have really been catching up to how we like to do dashboards because we like to do a pretty savvy background that mm -hmm. really explains some of the business things so you, it makes it uh, really accessible for somebody that isn't an architect of that specific application. Absolutely. So you guys have really worked to kind of catch up with some of those things that we're already doing on the AppDynamic CSAS platform yep. to make it available in FSO. So I think Really, you guys have met the demands that we've had, and it's just been partnering together to make that happen in this time frame. No, it's a it's a beautiful partnership journey that has been great. My team keeps telling me about the amount of tight partnership that we have had throughout this entire journey, and it's great to have somebody be a launch partner and actually develop a full fledged module at the GA of the platform. So that's fantastic. Um, what would be your kind of advice to other solution developers who want to start playing with this platform? Right, where should they focus on their focus their energies on? So I think there's two main areas that interacting with the FSO platform makes a ton of sense. One is bringing in new data sets. So it's maybe bringing in a specific vendor 
that you're really passionate about that really would be a big addition to what's going on in the FSO platform. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a type of data that is generally available because there's another vendor sourcing it, but it needs to come into the platform to really be part of the entire story. Then the other thing is building business relevant solutions on top of it. So really um, tying things together, because when you look at the data sets that come in out of the box, like the infrastructure, synthetics, the APM, that is, I would say, pretty straightforward to put mm -hmm. in. But when you layer on the data models that give it all business context, you really tie the whole story together. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll give you two interesting things. You spoke about kind of our roadmap around dashboarding and theming, which is awesome. Another thing which we're going to announce later in this conference is this idea of a schema browser. So solution developers, I know you all had to actually deal with a little bit of a black box of the platform because as you bring the data in, you don't know how the modeling comes in. The beauty of the platform is that once you have the model in there, the entire schema relationship unfolds. But if you were able to just see it, right, and if you were able to experience it, think how easy debugging would be. Think how yeah, easy that, building that Yeah, that makes it so much easier because one of the things that happened is we made a schema, mm -hmm. but the data didn't come in right away. Yep. And it was really hard to tell why. It took a lot of back and forth with your developers and our developers to say what's going on. So I think having a schema browser would just make it where you don't have, have to have that communication. The platform tells the developer What's missing here? Where's the where's the disconnect? Yeah, 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 yeah. love it. Excellent, excellent. Um, all right. In your mind, going back to the module that you have, what do you think is the significance of this module for the finance industry to begin with? Or if you think there are implications of developing something like this from your perspective, but even broader industries, I would love to hear that too. So one thing that I think is. Um, before this platform, the only other vendor that I ever saw this happening in was Splunk. And I'm a Splunk expert. It's really hard to build these solutions in Splunk. And the main reason is because it doesn't have a clear way to build a data model. It's mm -hmm. always data model on the fly. So that becomes a little squishy. And also, um, it doesn't have the baselining capability. So you have to build a lot of that stuff. Yep. And it's very time consuming and it's fairly brittle because it's not baked into the platform. Absolutely. So I think you could extend this to almost any use case where you're trying to solve a business problem and you have data. And the data can be in logs, it can be in a database. Um, in fact, the one that we did, a lot of the data that we have sourced for that client has come from mainframe post-processing. Yep. So it has not been from tracing, which is what a lot of people think. Sometimes it's from tracing, sometimes it's from end-user monitoring, but a lot of times it's from a database or mainframe post-processing in this case. Yep. So. It really is, um, where is the business data, how do I feed it into the platform, and how do I make a data model that makes sense, and then linking it to APM, synthetics, infrastructure, the whole thing. Excellent, excellent. Now, I, I think you really, really captured it well. When, when we thought a lot about the FSO platform, in some ways, we kind of drank our own champion, right? We yep. released Cloud Native Observ Application Observability, or AppD Cloud, last year. And as part of it, we built the platform, right? And what we learned from it is developing the product internally gave us a lot of insights of what you needed from a data platform perspective. And then the bug kind of struck. If we were able to open this up to developers, right? Developers not only within Cisco, but third party partners and customers, then that power can be harnessed by everybody. It's, so it's beautiful to see that about nine months later, we have partners like you actually building these applications. And it's only going to get bigger and better. Uh, sneak peek into the preview. Today, we are building kind of modules and enrichments to this application. But tomorrow, if you wanted to kind of build a completely different, independent, full stack observability application, you want to enable that on the platform. That's where we want to go. Yeah, totally different use case. Yep. Like you guys have the new cloud cost management thing yep. that's coming out. Yep. You guys have optimized Kubernetes that's yep. coming out. So if you had something that's a totally different vertical, you could build it on this platform. I Excellent. love it. Excellent, excellent. That was really, really good. Thank you. Um, what, any last final thoughts of what you think about the platform overall or what you expect and where your roadmap is with the platform? Well, what I love most about the platform actually is the way the data is stored on the back end mm -hmm. and how cost effective and efficient it is. It's really where all the vendors either are going or should be going with how the back end is. So really, I would say you're leapfrogging a lot of the other vendors and what they're doing with the back end. The other thing I would say is the fact that everything is sourced and stored as OTEL mm -hmm. is so powerful because it makes the correlation great. And OTEL is a data standard. It's flexible, but it really focuses on the things that matter, like metrics. Mm -hmm. You know, you can send in anything you want in logs, but if you can't turn it into metrics, it's yep. a huge issue. Yep. Yep. So yep. because OTEL is flexible, but still has some rules about what gets sent in, it's really effective for building something around observability. Absolutely, I love it. And I'll give you just an example. One of our customers 
they're sending interesting data which is business critical in their logs. Until then, they have to, they have to do effectively log scraping in order to get the data out. Now, they're effectively figuring out related metrics from the FSO platform and the logs become relevant to them out of the box. So yes. out of the box correlation, yes. which makes my life really, really simple and makes the customer life really, really simple. And I also just want to say that the platform at its base core, without these extra modules that we're building, it is extremely competitive in the marketplace mm -hmm. on how it does tracing, on how it does infrastructure, on how it does synthetics. And in that, it is that one-stop shop, that single pane of glass, that I only need to buy one platform instead of many tools to solve yep. these problems. Yep. I think because we're talking about FSO and I, all the things that can be extended, I just don't want it to be lost that even at its most basic, mm -hmm. it's really full-featured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an absolutely great comment. All right, this was absolutely a total pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Love it.